One of the things that I've always liked about working with Studio One is that it's not bogged down by an overabundance of options and preferences. Everything is very simple. It works in a smart way. And for the options or preferences that you would want to have some control over, we have pretty simple control over it. Things like the ability to change our mixer views, whether we want to work in this way where we expand a flap or whether we want to work in a larger console view, things like this. They're all there and tools for automation, how it works, whether you want an automation envelope for bus channels and effects channels, all of these options are there and we can enable them very easily to work the way that we want. One area though, that I always felt that there was room for improvement was with respect to the GUI and I guess more specifically how the GUI looks on different displays. I'm gonna tell you what I mean by this. Before the pandemic hit, I was doing a lot of different clinics. And when I did clinics, I would bring my MacBook Pro with me, and that was a laptop setup. Now, I'd set up all my sessions at home on my 1920 by 1080 monitor, which is 24 inches. And then when I would open them up, they would be very different. And also, when you would open things up on a laptop screen, you might be missing some information that you're used to seeing. Also, this inspector looked very different. So if we hop over to Studio One 5 for a moment and take a look at the inspector specifically, we've always had the ability to drag this up and down. And as we drag this down or up, it's either going to show or hide different options that we have available in the inspector. And the same can be said for this bottom section, which is really specific to the events that you have selected. Now, basically, I've always kind of tried to like choose a view where I had the information that I wanted, but in certain cases, I may actually have to go down here and drag this down if I wanted to access something. So this is a major improvement that we see with version six because we have complete customization for our user interface. Now, you can see this interface is very similar to version five. It's a little bit cleaner, the fonts are nicer, everything pops out a little bit more. We have some rounded corners in some of the channels and stuff, just looks a little bit cleaner, like it got a bit of a facelift. But the thing that I wanna talk about specifically is the customization options. So if we right click anywhere in the inspector, notice over here we have this customize option. Also, if we go to view and we go to customization, we can choose between some presets that Personas have supplied for us, or we can also choose the edit customization option. Now within here, we have these four different tabs. We have toolbar, inspector, transport, and browser. These are pretty self-explanatory. We have the ability to essentially uncheck things that aren't really relevant to us or that we don't want to see. So for example, my browser. I like my browser to show all the tabs. I don't necessarily want it to take up um, an excessive amount of space on my screen real estate. So I've hidden the shop tab because this is just a nice view where I can see everything that I need to see. Transport, let's say that you didn't need to see something very specific, like for example, sync to external devices. Take a look at this option over here as I, where is it here? As I uncheck this, it just removed that option. Now this comes in really handy when you're working on a laptop because with a laptop, Based on the different screen resolution, Studio One used to automatically choose what would be hidden, what you would no longer see. Now we have the ability to actually customize this and save a preset. We'll take a look at a couple other different options over here. The inspector is where it really comes together for me. So in this particular case, on my audio tracks, I don't ever use play overlap, so I've hidden that. On the audio events, I like this to be just a really clean representation of the things that I like to see. File tempo, transpose, gain, and the gain envelope. We have a lot of different options. We have tune, we have normalize, fade in, fade out, bend markers, or speed up. I don't need to see all of those because I don't use all of these tools. Now with respect to tracks, we have some common features like delay, track notes, layers, channels. I'm basically choosing only what it is that's relevant that I want to see. And then in terms of our toolbar, we can see over here we have our info view. I never use the info view. That's this thing over here. So I can hide that. Anything that I don't want to see. Control link, I've chosen to hide that just to make this a little bit cleaner. If I ever need to see it, I can pop in here and open this up. Now, once you have this set up the way that you like, and let's say you're in my situation where you're working with a laptop in clamshell mode, then you want to be able to save a preset. So I'm gonna choose this little option. We're gonna store something. And I'm gonna call this, I have a lot of different defaults because I've been playing with this with the different betas, but let's just call this MH default version six. And if I really wanted to be more detailed, I could say home studio or studio. Now, once I click okay, this has now been saved as a preset. So now that I've saved this, we can take a look at some other ones. So for example, if you wanted a minimal view, 
this is something that's very minimal. It's just uncluttering the display. If I wanted something that's just for audio editing, anything that's specific to audio editing in general will be displayed. And then we have a complete option, which is just going to show everything. I'm going to switch back to my MH default version six. This is all the information that I need. It's really, really useful to me. And if I was to be working remotely, which happens occasionally now, but not that much, I would basically just get out my laptop one day and I would sort out a view that makes sense for my laptop based on the screen real estate that I have available. And then I would save a preset. I would call it MH Mobile or something like that. And this would give me the ability to customize all these different options so that I'm only seeing what it is that I need to see when I want to see it. So that's it for this video. I hope that you found this useful. Hope that you're enjoying Studio One version six and I will catch you in the next video. Cheers.